Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So this is the second part of our lecture on Aryabhatiya. So in the earlier part, so we saw, so the algorithms presented by Aryabhata for extracting square root, cube root and so on. So in this lecture, we will be starting with uh, the formulae given by Aryabhata for finding the area of various geometrical objects. So starting with uh, triangle then proceeding towards trapezium, circle and so on. So in the later part, so we will see so the approximation which has been given by Aryabhata for the value of pi and uh, the method which has been discussed by him for generating the sign table. So in fact, Aryabhata has given two different approaches for constructing sign table. So, one is the geometrical approach, the other is the analytic approach. So, we will see both of them and then uh, during uh, our discussion on the verse which gives the value of pi. So, we will also see so an interesting note which has been given by the commentator Bhaskara on the use of the word asana. So, this has been discussed at great length even by Nilakantha Somyaji, which will be covered later, but here we will see the note which has been given by Bhaskara on the use of the word asana. So, let us start with uh, the verse which presents the formula for the area of a triangle. So, Aryabhata says Tribhujasya Phalasariram Samadala Koti Bhujardha Samvargaha. So, normally we say half into base into height. So, it is essentially the same expression which has been presented. Tribhujasya, bhuja is height, tribhuja is a triangle. Phala shariram, phalam is the word which has been employed by people to refer to the area. So, here the word shariram should be understood as pramana, the measure of the area. Tribhujasya phala shariram, samadala koti bhujardha samvargaha. So, ardha is half, samvarga is product. So, samadala koti bhuja, bhuja is a side. Okay. So, normally we are familiar with half into base into height. So, here this bhuja can be taken to be the side which is base and the samadala koti is the height. Okay. So, in fact, the word samadala koti has been analyzed by the commentator Bhaskara. See in a triangle usually uh, if you have a right angle triangle, so, so let us say ABC. So if AB is bhuja then AC is koti and of course this is called karna. So, if uh, this these two of course can be interchanged depending upon the choice of the angle. Okay. So, one is bhuja, the other is koti and the third is karna. Now, <coughs> if you consider a, a scalene triangle, so this is the part which we are calling as samadala koti. So, samadala koti and uh, this is bhujardha. So, this is the base, this is the height, half of it is the area of the triangle. So, in fact, uh, the word dala is generally used to refer to half splitting. Okay. So, dala means, so samadala, so generally is taken to be, so equal division. Okay. So, when you sort of divide. So, this is how the meaning as such comes from that. But then if we use this, then it will not be applicable for 
all the triangles. See, in fact, Bhaskara so commences his discussion by classifying the triangles into three types. He says, Trini Kshetrani Sama Dvisama Vishamani. So, Sama is all the three sides are same. So, Dvisama is isosceles and Vishama is scalene triangle. Bhuja, Bahuhu, Parshamiti, Pariyayaha, they are all synonyms and uh, there are three types of triangles. Further continuing the discussion, he says, Tribhuja Kshetra Jatim Angi Kritya Eka Vachana Nirdeshaha. In fact, we should have three types of triangles. So, whose area are you specifying? Is it applicable to all the triangles or is it something which is specific to one of the three types or any of the three types? So, he says, so this ekavachana, so this singular usage is jati mangi kritya. Jati means, so the group of all, okay, the class. So, it is applicable across the class of the triangles. Ekavachana nirdeshaha. Phalasya shariram, phala shariram, phala pramanam ityartaha. So, then he goes on to discuss about the word samadala koti. So, if you say samedale yasyaha seyam samadala, so if you use this kind of de derivation of the word, then this will be confined to only these two types. Okay. So, samadala. So, if you drop a perpendicular, then so the perpendicular divides the base into two equal halves only in these two cases, but not in the scalene type. But this formula, which has been presented for area, is applicable to all types. So, then how do you understand the word samadala koti? So, this is the question which has been raised by Bhaskara. And uh, he actually quotes a very interesting uh, maxim, I would say, Rudheshu Kriya Vyutpatti Karmartha Nartha Kriya. So, the word uh, Samadala Koti should be considered as a Rudha word. So, Rudha in the sense, so you should not so try to find the derived meaning of the word and it has to be just, for instance, so in the case of uh, the word Aja in Sanskrit. So, aja is generally referred to as a goat, but if you go to the derived meaning that which is not born, so it is never applicable to goat. Okay. So, when you consider this a rudha, so you just have to accept whatever is the meaning which has been accepted by the society at that point. So, that is what he is trying to convey. So, rudhe and if at all you want to provide some kind of a vipatti, it is not for the purposes of artha kriya. But uh, this is a very interesting maxim, so which can be applied applied in various discipline, various contexts. Here, so he categorically states, avalambaka vyutpatya trayana amapi phalanayanam siddham, and therefore this uh, derivation should not be taken in the literal sense here. So samadala koti should be simply understood as the perpendicular that is dropped onto the base from the vertex. Okay. So this is what the Sutra, Aryabhata Sutra means Tribuja Phala, so the area of the triangle is Bhujardha, so half of the base into Samadala Koti height, so this is all it is. So, it is applicable to all the three types of triangles. So, this uh, verse basically tells you that the area can be calculated using this formula, but then if you do not know the height, so you only know the sides of the triangle then how do you go about finding the area. So, then there should be a way to find out the height of the triangle. So, that is what is discussed by Bhaskara in his commentary. So, the word abadha has been employed to refer to the two parts which are generated by dropping the perpendicular from the vertex. Okay. If you drop the perpendicular, which is referred to as samadala koti, you get two abadhas. So, Bhaskara essentially gives a certain method by which you first calculate the abadhas and then from that you find out the samadala koti. So, if you know only the sides, so you know the base, so that is taken for granted and uh, for finding height, so based on the three sides, so he presents a formula, this is how it goes. So, first he gives an expression for the difference in the abadhas and the difference in abadhas, so B d minus C d. So, B d is one abadha, C d is another abadha. So, 
So, the difference is c square minus b square by a. So, this can be easily seen and uh, we have an expression for the difference in abadhas in terms of the sides of this. Okay. So, if we have this basically, so a b c So, this is D. So, B D plus C D is equal to A, which is known, and B D minus C D is given to be C square minus B square in this. So, once we have these two, we have the expression for. So, just add this and uh, subtract this. So, you have the expression for the two abadhas. So, this is stated to be half of bhumi, bhumi is the word which is used to refer to the base. So, bhumi plus minus a difference. So, this gives you the expression for both the abadhas. So, having known this abadha, so it is uh, since you know c, you can calculate p either from this abadha or from the other abadha. So, it is basically Karna square. So, the Karna can be either C or B depending upon either of the triangles that you choose. So, this is what Bhaskara says. Bhujayor Varga Visheshaha. In fact, uh, it is very uh, interesting to read the way he presents this. Bhujayor Varga Visheshaha Tayorva Samasa Vishesha Bhyasaha. Bhuja is the side. Varga is square, Vishesha is difference. Okay. Bhujayor Varga Visheshaha means c square minus b square. Tayorva Samasa Vishesha Bhyasaha. Samasa is putting together, essentially means sum, and Vishesha is difference. So, he says b square minus c square is c plus b into c minus b, and that is also equal to Abadhantara Samasa Vishesha Bhyasaha. So, the sum of the two abadhas and the difference of the two abadhas. So, this is straight away seen from the consideration of these two triangles. Okay. So, you get this. So, this is the first relation that he says. So, then so a from this expression we see that so a difference is so c square minus b square. So, which is what we stated in the earlier slide and therefore, abadha is this. So, this is how Bhaskara proceeds. In fact, he cites a verse antarahinam. So, whenever you have something of this form, this is called antara, this is called samasa. So, you have you have to just sum this and then find the difference. In fact, uh, this is sort of demonstrated with a formula example. So, karnas triyodashasyat panchadashanyo mahi dvisaptaiva vishamat tribhujasya sakhe phala sankhya ka bhavedasya. So, this is there are Bhaskara present several examples on various occasions wherever he has to illustrate the use of a particular formula. So, I will uh, skip this basically uh, he presents how one finds the area of a triangle. So, given the three sides and you have to calculate the height and from abadha you have to get the area. So, now I move on to the area of circle. So, which has been presented by Aryabhata. This is a very interesting uh, so, in fact, it is a half verse wherein uh, uh, he has used the word yeva. So, samaparinahasya ardham vishkambhardha hatameva vritta phalam. So, this yeva has a lot of uh, significance. Parinaha refers to circumference. So, vishkambhardha is vishkambha is diameter. So, ardha is half of it. So, samaparinahasya ardham. So, it refers to half the circumference. So, the arc has to be absolutely symmetrical that is what it means. So, samaparinahasya ardham vishkambhardha hatam. So, means multiplied by the radius semi diameter. So, this is the vritta phalam. Fine. So, this amounts to pi into r square. Fine. Commenting on the usage of the word eva, 
so which is quite uh, edifying. So, he says Bhaskara says Yevakara Karanam. So, why did Aryabhata use the word Yeva? So, is it meaningless or can we assign some sense to that? So, this is the analysis which he does. Yevakara Karanam taking a very simplistic view one can say, so in certain uh, cases, so we have to fulfill the metrical compulsions and therefore, so one adds some word which need not be necessarily conveying something which is very meaningful. So, this is one way of saying that the eva has been used just to fit the meter of the verse. So, eva karakaranam arya puranartham pradipattavyam athava eva karakaranena upaya niyamaha kriyate. So, upaya niyamaha means upaya is means, niyama is fixing. So, putting a certain constraint on the means which you can employ for finding the area. So, is there any other means? No, 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 there is no other mean, you have to use only this way. So, that is the way this has to be understood. Upaya niyamaha kriyate. So, samaparinahasya artham vishkambhardha hatameva vritta phalam nanyadupayantaram asti. So, there is no other means. So, this is the only means to obtain the exact area of a circle. So, nanyadupayantaram asti, why should he say? So, if there are different paths to reach a place, then you can say choose only this path. If there is only one path, then there is no point in saying that you have to go only by this path. So, then he starts, he asks this question, no, 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 this does not seem to be appropriate. Naita dasti, upayantara shravanat, so there are also other means. So, what is that upaya? So, he says anyatra vyasadha kritihi. Trisanguna ganitam. So, somewhere it is stated. So, Vyasardha Kriti. Vyasardha is radius. Kriti is square. Uh, so, Vyasardha Kriti or square multiplied by 3. So, which means the value of pi is approximately taken to be 3, and for various practical purposes, people have been employing this. So, in order to see that those things are not taken to be the right formula to be employed for finding the area of a triangle. So, this eva kara through this eva Aryabhata has uh, given a certain guideline that this is the, the way to obtain the exact area. So, naita dupayantaram sukshmam kintu vyavaharikam. So, the other upayas have to be understood as vyavaharika means for certain transactional purposes where you do not require that kind of a accuracy. So, next we move on to the area of trapezium. Ayama gune parshve sad yoga hrte swapata rekhe te vistara yoga artha gune nyayam kshetra phalam ayami. So, in fact, uh, the later half of the verse actually presents the area of a trapezium and the earlier half of the verse has been used to define something else. Kshetra phalam, Kshetra is a certain geometrical figure. So, that is the sense in which it has been used. This Kshetra phalam is the area of this Kshetra. Vistara yogardha gune, Vistara here is used to refer to the base and the face. Okay. In this figure, B C is the base and uh, A D is the face. Yoga is sum, Vistara yoga, Ardha is half. Okay. Vistara yoga Ardha guna is multiplying. So, Vistara yoga Ardha guna, so what is the other term? Ayama. So, ayama is used to refer to this perpendicular distance, the dis distance of separation between the base and the face. Okay. So, the area of trapezium is half times, so base plus face into ayama. So, this is the formula which he gives. So, what is the earlier part of the verse? So, here he says ayama gune. So, ayama is this uh, distance I said, so which is marked as p here. Ayama gune parshve. 
So, when ayama is multiplied by the parshva, so parshva is also basically the side. Okay. So, tad yoga hrite. So, this BC and AD are also referred to as two parshvas. Okay. So, ayama gune parshve. So, this F into P and B into P. So, tad yoga hrite. Yoga is again sum. Tad yoga here refers to the sum of the base and the face, the two parshvas. Tad yoga hrite F plus B and F. So, swapata rekhe te. Okay. So, pata rekha refers to C and D. So, if you consider so two diagonals drawn, so then, so this is the formula that has been presented. So, in fact, uh, the le next verse is a very interesting verse. So, wherein uh, analysis has been done, deep analysis has been done by Bhaskara which is quite edifying when we look at uh, his commentary. He says Sarvesham Kshetranam, a generalized approach to finding area. So, he initially started with triangle, then he moved on to trapezium, then he discussed about uh, circle. So, then he says is there a way, general way of understanding how do we compute area? Can we see some kind of a similarity or can we do something? So, that I mean a general formula prescription can be given and you can fit in different cases into this by and consider as a special case in all the three things. So, that is the kind of analysis which has been done by Bhaskara while commenting upon this verse. So, Sarvesham Kshetranam, see Kshetra is a geometrical figure I said Sarvesham Kshetranam all the geometrical figures Prasadhya Parshve Phalam Tadabhyasaha. So, Prasadhya Parshve, so you have to just find the sites appropriate value of the sites take a product of this. See the approach is, so area is product of two things. So, with this in mind, he says the parshva has to be defined appropriately for various objects. So, that is the import of this is what is conveyed by Bhaskara. So, sarvesham kshetranam prasadhya parshve phalam tadabhyasaha, phalam is area, tadabhyasaha is the product. After all, having given expression independently for all this, so, why is it Aryabhata gives one more verse? So, this seems to be redundant. So, we do not need this. So, this is the kind of question that he raises and then he says, so this can be considered as a different way of arriving at the same result, so that you can sort of cross check one with the other. Okay. So, that is the purpose of this and uh, his commentary goes like this, Prasadhya Parshve. The sadhanam is basically computing. So, prasadhya, so this pra sabdaha prakrishtavachi. So, prakarshena means depending upon the case which uh, you are uh, currently handling, depending on whether it is circle, trapezium, this whatever. So, you have to appropriately find the site prakarshena sadhayitva, that is what it means. So, kaschatayo parshayo prakarsha. In fact, he goes on. Let us consider this figure. So, in this, so Vistarartha and Ayama. Okay. So, Phala is basically can be defined as product of two things. So, what is that? Vistarartha and Ayama. So, Ayama is the height and Vistarartha is so half of this. So, in the case of uh, a triangle, so what happens to the face? So, it just collapses to 0. Right. So, B plus F, F collapses to 0. In the case of a rectangle, so F is same as B. Okay. And uh, how do we go about for circle? He says, Vrittakshetre Vishkambhartha Vistaraha Paridhyardham Ayamaha. So, the Ayama is the kind of uh, distance of separation between the faces. So, in the case of a circle, what you have to conceive of is Vishkambhartha is to be taken as Vistarartha. Okay. So, Vishkambhartha Vistaraha Paridyardham Ayamaha Tadeva Ayata Chaturashra Kshetram. So, this is the kind of uh, Ayata Chaturashra, you can visualize it to be a rectangle. So, even this circle can be conceived of. 
okay, in that sense. So, it is uh, this is how this verse has been explained by Bhaskara. In fact, further uh, there is a very uh, interesting discussion. So, I wanted to uh, just quote this a certain uh, maxim which has been employed by Bhaskara to justify the presence of this verse here. Okay. So, atha katham eke neva yatrena phalanainam prate karanancha sadhyate. So, in Tamil they say, so you throw one stone, you get two mangoes, or kalla rendu manga. So, something like this. So, eke neva yatrena means in one effort. Phalanainam prate karanam. Phalanainam means finding the area, and prate karanam is sort of verification. Okay. So, prate karanancha prasadhyate. Athedam prate karanartham prakritam. Sakatham phalanainaya bhavati. Atha phalanainarthe katham prate karanaya. Naisha doshaha. There is nothing wrong in this. So, he says, Anyartham prakritam, Anyartha sadhakam drishtam. Anyartham prakritam means it was started in a particular way for a particular purpose in mind, but it can also serve certain other purposes. Okay. So, this uh, quotation is quite interesting. Shalyartham kulyaf praniyante. Kulya means uh, water canals. Okay. So, shali means dhanya. Okay. So, shalyannam. So, during Nevedya we say, so shalyannam nivedyami. So, it is a this basically a form of rice. Okay, shali. So, shalyartham kulyaf praniyante. So, the water channels are created to water the fields. Tabhyascha pani yampiyate upaspashyate cha. So, incidentally, somebody can go and uh, use the water for some other purpose. So, nothing is lost. So, it is in this sense. So, we can understand that uh, this shloka, so which has been composed by Aryabhata, so can serve several purposes. Okay. So, now I move on to uh, yet another interesting topic, which actually forms the basis for one of the construction methods which has been described by Aryabhata for finding the sign table. So, this half verse Paridhehe Shadbhagajya Vishkam Bhardhena Satulya. So, this is a statement. Paridhi is circumference, Paridhehe of the circumference, Shadbhagajya. So, Jya refers to the gods. So, in fact, uh, suppose you consider circle A B is the chord, so which is referred to as Jia. So, this portion of the circle. So, this is referred to as Dhanuhu or Chapa, which actually means bow. So, this looks like the arc looks like bow, and uh, any arc length is referred to as Chapa or Dhanuhu or any synonym for that. So, this card A B is referred to as Jya or Guna or Shinjini, there are various terms which have been used. So, this is sort of conceived as a bow and this is conceived as a string and uh, they all mean string. So, what is stated in this verse is Shadbhaga Jya, so one sixth. Okay. So, if you conceive of a circle, so divide it into six equal parts. So, the card corresponding to one sixth of the circumference is referred to as Paridhehe Shadbhaga Jya, and he just states Vishkam Bhardhena Satulya. So, this is same as the radius. So, this is pretty evident. So, if you think of this triangle O B C, so which is an uh, equilateral triangle. So, we have 
this chord which is same as the radius fine. So, chord of 60 degrees is same as the radius. So, what is the purpose of stating this? So, in fact, he says prayojanancha asya shadbhaga jya pradarshanasya samavritta paridhipadam chindyat ityasyam karikayam vakshyati. So, vakshyati means he will state. So, in fact, Aryabhata is going to make use of this in yet another verse wherein he is going to present the sign table. So, this is what Bhaskara says, prayojanancha asyaha. The purpose of defining this can be understood with the verse beginning with samavritta paridhipadam chindyat. So, we will come to that in a minute. But uh, before going to the procedure which has been delineated by Aryabhata for finding the sign table. So, we will discuss this very important verse which has been quoted in various forums in various ways and it has also been misinterpreted in various uh, places. So, chaturadhikam shatam ashtagunam dvashashtis tatha sahasranam ayutadvaya vishkam bhasya asanno vritta parinaha. So, chaturadhikam shatam ashtagunam, see the first half of the verse basically presents the value 62832. So, how does it go about? Chaturadhikam shatam, so 4 plus 100, ashtagunam multiplied by 8 and dvashashtihi sahasranam, sahasra is 1000, 62000. So, this refers to this number and uh, what is stated in the later half of the verse is ayutadvaya vishkam bhasya. So, what does this number correspond to? So, this is the number which has to be employed in order to obtain something. So, ayutadvaya vishkam bhasya, ayuta is 10,000, ayutadvayam is 20,000. So, if the vishkam bha diameter happens to be 20,000, then this number which was stated happens to be the circumference. So, what is stated is the ratio of circumference to the diameter. The use of the word asana has been discussed at great length. So, why did the As Aryabhata use the word asana? He would have simply said Vishkambhasya Vritta Parinaha. Asana is something which is nearby, close by, okay. so which, which can be understood to be approximate. So, we will uh, see how this has been analyzed, but before that I also wanted to give this verse as an example of the use of Bhuta Sankhya and also to say that uh, this same value has been given by Bhaskara in a slightly different way. So, Vyase Bhanandagni Hate, see Bham, uh, Bham is star, so it refers to 27. Nanda, so Navanandas are famous, so it refers to 9. Agni is 3, see, so 3, 9, 27, so this is what it is. So, Vyase Bhananda Agni Hate Vibhakte, Vibhakte is divided, so divided by Kha Bana Surya, Kham is 0, Bana is 5, see. The word Shara has been employed to refer to number 5. So, why is bona phi? Ah, so, this pancha bana, see manmatha is considered to be pancha bana. Why is he pancha bana? Ah, ah, very good. So, that names you have uh, got it, but then the significance is the following. So, manmatha if he shoots arrow, so all the senses will be simultaneously attacked. You will lose yourself completely. <laughs> So, that is why he is called Panchabana, okay. So, that Khabana Suryaihi Parithihi Susukshma, okay. So, we will leave it. So, this is a fairly, this Susukshma in the sense there are various approximations which are being given. This is a far better approximation, that is what we need to understand. So, now I uh, present the discussion which has been presented by Bhaskara to you on the use of the word Asana. Asana means nikataha, nikataha is close by. So, then he asked the question kasya asana, so 
So, close to what? So, there are two, three things which are used. One is sukshmasya parinahasya. This is one way of saying. So, there is a parinaha which is very sukshma, which is very accurate. So, this is close to the very accurate value. This is one way of saying. But then he says, katham vijnayate sukshmasya asana iti. So, napunaha vyavaharikasya asana. So, this vyavaharika value is just taken as 3. So, this can be close to this or close to that also. So, asana is something which is common to both. Yavata ashruta parikalpana sukshma vyavaharika yoho tulya. In fact, in the edition there was a problem. So, the shruta parikalpana is what is found in the edition. So, I was just breaking my head. So, how is the shruta parikalpana? Parikalpana is something which you try to create in your own mind. The kalpanam is something which is your imagination. So, shruta parikalpana it does not make much sense. When something is unheard, then you have to imagine. So, that is why it should be. So, this yavata it is just I, I believe because of this savarna dirga. So, they just uh, split it as shruta parikalpana that is my guess. So, yavata ashruta parikalpana sukshma vyavaharika yoho tulya. Then he says naisha doshaha. So, sandeha matram idam. It is true that your objection is valid. Then he says, Sarva Sandehe Shuba Idam Avatishthate. So, this is a general maxim which is very important to understand. So, he says, Vyakhyanato Vishesha Pratipatti Nahi Sandeha Dalakshanam. This will be quoted very frequently in uh, the study of philosophy, Vyakarana, and all that. So, he says, Vyakhyanato Vishesha Pratipatti. Whenever there is a sort of doubt which arises, then you have to resort to the tradition. So, how it has been analyzed, how it has been understood. So, so Vyakhyanataha means, so a certain uh, explanation which has been offered in the tradition. So, from that we understand, we understand certain special meaning, Vishesha Pratipattihi. Tasmat, therefore we say Sukshmasya Asannaha iti Vyakhyasyama. Since the tradition says that this is close to the accurate value and therefore we will say Asanna means only this in this context. Athava, or else he says, asana shabdena tat samipavarti nabhidhiyate. Let us not take the word asana to be something which is close by. Samipavarti means that which is residing close by. Tena cha tadeva asana shabdena nochate tarihi kinchid anyad bhinnam. Yadi vyavaharika asana vyavahar. See, this is a different way of looking at that. He says, if you, let us not uh, debate on that. So, if you say vyavaharika sa asana. Vyavaharika is already a gross value. Asana is closer to that. So, which means much grosser. So, Vyavaharika sa asana, if you say Vyavaharika, Vyavaharika adapi papiyan paridhihi syat, you will get a much grosser value for the circumference. Nakaschitu papataram prayasam karoti. So, no one is going to make some effort in specifying some value saying that this is going to be much grosser and therefore you use this. So, this does not make much sense. And therefore, by purely logical reasoning, so we can arrive at the conclusion that asana has to be understood only as something which is very close to the exact value. Then he asked this question, Atha asana paridhi kasmatu uchyate, napunaha sputa paridhireva uchyate. So, this is a similar question which Nilakantha also asked and then beautifully explains what uh, one means by irrational. So, in fact, uh, which I think Professor Srinivas will discuss that quotation later. So, here Bhaskara says, Saha upayaha eva nasti yena sukshma paridhi ani yate. He categorically states there is no means by which you will be able to exactly state the perimeter. So, here he sort of concludes the discussion on the use of the word asana. Now, I move on to the method which has been described by Aryabhata to find out the tabular or signs. So, generally in uh, almost every astronomical work or mathematical work, we will see that uh, a certain method has been described in which typically they will divide a quadrant into 24 parts. So, as shown in the diagram. So, you take the circle, you take this quadrant O P naught P 24 and divide this into 24 equal parts. Okay, the points are marked as P 1, P 2, P 3 and so on. So, what is it that we are interested in? So, we are interested in the chord lengths. 
so which is basically sign you understand so the projections which have been shown here p1 n1 p2 n2 p3 n3 are basically the sign see if you consider this triangle see o n2 p2 right angle triangle so p2 n2 is basically sign if you consider this as the angle see p2 o n2 is the angle and the sign is p2 n2 so these are referred to as gyas and uh, we denote them as r sin of i times theta so theta is 90 by 24 so which is 3 degree and 45 minutes 225 minutes clear so the purpose is to determine all the pi and ni okay so the 24 the last value obviously is going to be op24 which is same as the radius of the circle okay and uh, once these values are known pi and ni which are referred to as in fact uh, to be precise they should be referred to as ardha jya so because jya is the total chord length okay as i showed here so this is jya and uh, ardha jya is half of it which is what is sin but uh, for the purposes of convenience so people have started using jya itself to refer to ardha jya so this is understood from the context hmm. if we know the r sin values corresponding to the multiples of theta so from 0 to 90 degree then for any intermediate value so we use the interpolation and uh, usually this first order interpolation is employed and if more precise values are required so later second order interpolation formula has also been stated i think maybe professor sri ram or myself we will do it little later so what is the verse so in fact I, uh, it was referred to earlier see paridhe shadbhagajya vishkam bhardena satulya so this uh, specification of radius as equal to the value of chord 60 was in connection with this verse so samavritta paridhi padam chindyat tribhujat chaturbhujat chiva samachapajyardhani tu vishkam bhardhe yatheshtani so this is the geometrical approach to construction of the sign table given by aryabhata vritta paridhi padam chindyat vritta paridhi is the circumference okay so circumference of the vritta circle padam refers to one fourth so vritta paridhi padam refers to one quadrant of a circle vritta paridhi padam chindyat chindyat means may you divide may you split tribhujat chaturbhujat chaiva so you should conceive it as triangle and rectangle chaturbhuja okay so vritta paridhi padam chindya tribhuja chaturbhuja chaiva samachapajyardhani tu vishkam bhardhe yatheshtani without uh, the detailed commentary given by bhaskara so this verse as well as the next verse which has been presented by aryabhata which is analytic approach is going to be almost impossible for us to understand <coughs> so the the value of chord 60 was stated to be r and this value is basically 3438 so this is uh, pretty evident so because usually what people do is in uh, almost all the astronomical texts but for some so this uh, circumference is taken to be 21600 which is basically 360 times 60 so 360 degrees into 60 minutes so the number of minutes in the circumference or rather the number of units in a circle is taken to be 21600 now that aryabhata in his verse chaturadhikam shatam ashtagunam so he has given the uh, ratio of the circumference to the diameter 
which is essentially pi. Once you know that, then you know what radius is. Radius is 21,600 by 2 pi. So, this was sort of stated by Aryabhata and this will be very close to 3438 this value. In fact, uh, Bhaskara so gives all these values so while explaining in this verse in great detail. So, how do we proceed? So, by geometrical construction, so all that is required is so this value initially you know. So, you have to just take this 3438 is known. So, since you 21600 the value of phi is known and therefore, the radius is known. Okay, we will start with this. Then if you look at carefully, so since this was stated to be radius, consider this triangle O B C. If you consider the triangle O B C, so this is radius. So, B C this angle is 30 and therefore, since radius is known, B C is known. So, sin 30 degrees is also known. So, sin 30 degrees is basically the eighth sign. If you conceive it to be 24 parts, so 30 degrees is going to be the eighth sign. Now, you know since you know the radius, you also know sin 30 okay, r by 2. So, this is basically r by b c is r by 2 and therefore, this is also known. Now, we consider this o a b c. So, this is the kind of chatur bhuja which you can think of. So, sin 60 is a b and this is also equal to o c, but you know r, you know r by 2. So, you do this r square minus r square by 2. So, you basically get this value o c. So, now you know sin 90, you know sin 30, you know sin 60. So, what is to be understood in general is if you know sin theta, then obviously you can get sin 90 minus theta. Okay. So, this is known. Okay. Then since 30 is known, so you also know verse 30. So, this verse is basically so r minus r cos theta. See sin 90 minus theta is basically cos theta. So, r minus r cos c in this diagram. So, o c is basically cos theta hmm, cotija and c d is the shara. Okay. So, o d is r. So, o c is r cos theta. So, r minus r cos theta is basically c d. So, this is also known. So, once it is known, so you have sin 30 and verse 30. You know r cos theta. So, r minus r cos theta is known. So, verse 30 is known. You just do this. So, b d, b d if you see, see you know b c, you know c d. So, now you can this in this triangle b c d you know b d also. So, what is b d? b c is b d <coughs> is basically the chord of 30 degrees. We started with chord of 60 degrees which is basically radius. So, now we have come to chord of 30 degrees. So, half of it is going to be r sin 15. Oh yeah. So, you can keep on extending this kind of an argument and you will be able to construct the entire sin table. So, the principle is just simple. So, r sin theta gives r cos theta and that gives r verse theta which is r minus r cos theta and uh, from sin theta and verse theta you will be able to this is what we have shown here you will be able to get theta by 2. So, once theta is known 90 minus theta is known and theta by 2 is also known. So, with this you will be able to construct the entire sign table I am uh, just going to show this how the scheme will work. So, you know 8th sign. So, once you know 8th sign which is 30. So, you can get the 4th sign and see theta by 2 and 90 minus theta. So, 16 sign is known from 4th you can go to 2nd and on the other side you can go to 90 minus theta is 20th. So, you can follow this tree and this will give you most of the sign values and you should start with again 12th. So, 45 degrees. So, for 45 degrees all that you need to do is so you have to just draw a line G D. See this G D gives you the chord of 90. So, half of it is going to give you. So, this G D how do you know? So, you know R. So, you find R square plus R square root 2 R. 
So, root 2 r is known. So, then you know twelfth sign and then you follow the same tree. So, sixth sign. So, here if you go this is 24 that is not required. So, from 6 you get 13th and 18th and so on. So, you will see that the all the 24 sign values can be easily obtained by this geometrical approach. Okay. So, with this uh, now I stop the discussion on Aryabhatiya. So, we will continue in our next lecture. Thank you.